Hello and welcome to my channel. You might have noticed I've changed my name from Helena Daydreamer to Craftful Vision, but you should be able to still find me under my old name. Now, I've already shared some videos on the Xtool F1 Ultra in the past, but since then I've done more testing on the F1 Ultra. So that's what I'm going to be sharing in this video. Of course, as always, I will be adding the settings and useful information on the screen so you will be able to check it out but this footage is from october last year and it's march at the moment if i forget to mention anything i do apologize but now i have a lot of footage because i've done so many different tests on so many different materials but i decided to split it into two parts so the first part is this one where i'm gonna be focusing on different metals and also some like random materials like acrylics and coasters and things like that and in the second part i will be focusing more on wood and those sort of materials of course this machine is going to be linked in the description box below this video so if you are interested in buying this machine or just having a closer look and read the description on xtools website it's all going to be linked under this video and i think that's about it so let's start i hope you enjoy and find it helpful let's start with something easy here i'm engraving a brass coin the engraving is very nice then we have a small piece of bare brass. The first try was very faint. So I engraved it again with these settings, which led to a nice deep engraving. I mean, it's not super 3D, but the engraving is pretty dark and deep. I do want to have a go at 3D engraving at some point. I find it fascinating. I've seen people engraving challenge coins, out of brass coins and it's really cool so i will definitely have a go at that <laughs> then i thought i would cut this piece of brass and so i did and the piece was very hot obviously and the masking tape was not it because the laser just melted the glue and it was a bit messy but it's important to have your piece of metal secured in place with something as it can warp and move which is something i didn't do with this next test and it still worked out luckily i have cut a small heart shape from bell brass on the same settings as the previous cut and it's perfect. Ooh, then I went on to silver, just for a little bit because it's expensive. I engraved and then cut a small heart out of a sterling silver sheet. It came out great. I only needed to give it a light polish after to smooth out the edges, but the cut was perfect. If I was cutting it out with my saw, I would then need to spend time filing it and polishing so it was worth it to laser cut at least for me but i ended up over polishing the design with my rotary and then i somewhere lost the heart <laughs> i really don't know where i put it so i can't show you the final result but the design was over polished so you don't even want to see anyway here is the metal business card always comes out so nice And this plated stainless steel bookmark from Xtool came out extremely nice, in my opinion. I decided to make it personalized and gave it to my friend. And here is another plated stainless steel charm. First I used a blue laser and then a fiber laser because I just wanted to see the difference. <laughs> and another charm with a horse using the blue laser. And I engraved these two leaf charms or slash beads with the fiber laser. 
as you can see when I'm using the fiber laser the engraving is much deeper and obviously darker. Next we have another coated aluminium business card. This time I'm engraving a photo of an angel and then cutting it out but I'm not great with photo settings. <laughs> I know it's too bright and I would need to play with it more to make it look more realistic. It was just a test and I will share my settings anyway just in case it helps somebody. And since I was so excited about the business card being cut out so easily, I tried to cut out some skulls for Halloween. I told you this footage was from October last year, but look at this. It didn't cut it out. What a bummer. Perhaps it's because I used the blue laser instead of the fiber laser. That's it. And it's not the first time that happened to me. Oh well, at some point I will learn. So the laser just warped the business card without cutting it. And so I opted for a black business card instead and selected the fiber laser. And boom, it cut out my design like butter. I still had to pop the skulls out. That sounded a bit brutal, but yeah, that's what I did. Same goes for the brass and silver cuts. You just need to pop them out with your fingers. Basically, when you are cutting metal with a fiber laser, what I have noticed is you do need to kind of put a little bit of pressure on the cutout. It's not just gonna fall down. And then I engraved a small aluminium tin with a logo. I just made the name up. So if there is an owner of a business called Toadstool Jewelry, no, I am not trying to steal your name. Here is a piece of copper that I was engraving. And I have to say, copper has always been tricky to engrave on my original Xtool F1, even on the D1 Pro with IR infrared module. It would engrave slash mark the metal but at the really high power and very low speed so it took forever to do like 20-30 minutes for a very small design. So I was interested to see how the fiber laser in Xtool F1 Ultra would engrave bare copper. Here is the second try and it did a good job. I mean these settings are a bit of an overkill and like I said I'm just testing the machine and I want to see how deep it can engrave but yeah it's working so much better and faster than my other machines. Now let's move on to other materials such as this little acrylic container. <laughs> Fake headphones. random pieces of acrylics which didn't work apart from the black acrylic which did work but the cut melted the edges a bit and I have to say I am a bit fussy about that since having my Xtool P2 CO2 laser which excels in cutting acrylics absolutely beautifully so this cut is okay but not to my current standards but I realize this machine has not been made to cut acrylics just as the P2 has not been made to engrave metals, every machine has its own use and its own place. Here is a faux leather patch or coaster, I'm not sure what it is. It's from Xtool and I think it came out so lovely. Then I tried to make a stamp with my logo on and I used just the blue laser for that. This piece of rubber was supplied from Xtool with my Xtool D1 Pro 20 watt, but I never used it and because I thought you know my D1 Pro is 20 watt and the blue laser in the F1 Ultra is 20 watt as well it should work and it kind of did but there was a flame while I was engraving which worried me because I don't like flames in the house unless I'm cooking so I ended up not doing further testing. I also have a lot of details in my logo and I should have mirrored the image before engraving but the machine still engraved it. I mean I guess I'll try it on my P2 CO2 laser next time because I would really like to have a rubber stamp. I'm in the middle of setting up a new business and I would like a rubber stamp for that one as well. 
So if anybody has any experience with making rubber stamps on any of the Extool machines, please let me know your settings or your process in the comments. I would really, really appreciate that. And then I thought I would try and engrave this shiny gemstone heart. I think it's aventurine, not sure. And it worked, but again, as I didn't feel like messing with the settings, I didn't really want the stone to explode in my machine and possibly damage it. I left it at that. I felt much more comfortable engraving this slate coaster or whatever it is. First I engraved these trees and then the text. And as I haven't fully closed my machine, I was wearing protective goggles. And speaking of safety, I had my Extool F1 Ultra connected to my heavy duty Extool air purifier. And I made sure I wasn't engraving anything that was too toxic or dangerous to be engraved. Or at least I hope I wasn't. I also ventilated the room really well. And that's it for now. If you would like to check out this machine yourself, I will leave a link in the description box below this video. And I will see you in the second part of the Extool F1 Ultra testing. If you've enjoyed this video, then give it a like, consider subscribing to my channel and say hi in the comments. I would really love to hear from you. And I will see you in my next video.